All right, we are back. We're gonna look at just one random card and we'll talk about the different uses of that card, maybe a couple strategies, and maybe some interesting moment that's happened in the history of many, many sessions. And this is the card. Ooh, the planetary base. All right, you wanna talk about it, Matt? Uh, so the planetary base is one of three different types of face-up cards in Chaosmos. Now, face-up cards are different from all the other types of cards in that they've got a bar on the side here, and when you're placing them inside of a planetary envelope, instead of putting them face down, you can actually choose to activate them face up. And when you do that, it then protects this planet in some way from your opponents. What the base does is it allows you to leave behind weapons and other equipment, and nobody else can access that planet unless they attack your base and beat it just as if it was a player. So yeah, so the base is essentially like a non-player character. As long as it's, it's established, meaning face up, in this case, this particular card costs one action because it has a little action symbol. So you would announce that you would spend one action. Bases are the only of the tactical cards that cost an action. The, the vaults and traps are actually free to use and you could do it secretly. You would put it face up like that and then you would put your other cards that you want the base to protect face down behind it like that so that when, and then you can leave and then when someone else lands on that planet, they're gonna know because the face-up card is there and also there's a, there's a token on the planet that there's a base there. And so if I attack Matt's base, Matt would leave his own hand of cards aside and then he would fight using just the combat cards that are inside that base. Any particular moment you wanna talk about with the base? I mean, I always use bases uh, to, to misdirect my opponents. So most of the time when I'm, when I'm running around the game board, if I come across a base, I like to establish it because my opponents don't know whether I'm leaving something valuable there or not. So it can often act as a way to draw people to a planet and that can waste their time. Or what you can do is you can leave behind something valuable, uh, either combat cards to protect the base or maybe the Ovoid and hope that nobody comes by because they don't think they can beat the base in combat. Yeah, there's definitely a couple other things you can do with bases besides just protecting the planet with the combat cards inside. Bases also form another interesting function, which is that they sort of establish a secondary home for you, and there's other cards that combine well with them. For example, there's the planetary transceiver. This lets you, even if you're far away from your base, you can, you can spend actions to reach into your base remotely and suck cards back into your hand. So this is helpful if, you know, you've protected the ovoid on the base with a bunch of combat cards, but very slowly people start to whittle your base down and, and you think you're gonna lose control of your base at some point. You can suck the ovoid back remotely from your base, but everyone's gonna know that you sucked something out of the base. So that's, it's sort of a, a uh, it, it definitely throws suspicion on you. Now the, the, the drawback for bases is that oftentimes when you build a base, you can become so absorbed in establishing your base and bringing back cards to put there and building up a strategy with it, that you often lose track of the real goal of the game, which is to find and have the Ovoid in your hand. And I do this all the time oh, when yeah. I play as the Haguin. I end up with this amazing invincible base, and then I think all I've got to do is find the Ovoid and put it yeah. inside. Yeah. Um, my, one of my favorite things is to combine bases. There's actually two base cards, and if there's something called the Planetary Hypergate, and that, that also costs an action, and you, it lets you hyperspace back to your base. So if if there's a base on, say, Guriwan and your Vroon, you could actually spend an action to go back to your base using the, the planetary hypergate. But with the Amnion Power Flux, hyperspacing is actually free and cards that cost an action, basically you can save actions with it. So if you had two bases, you could actually use this card and this card and both your bases combined to zoom all back and forth between your bases, putting cards in one base, moving cards to the other base, using your planetary transceiver to remotely suck cards out of the base. But now you've got a bunch of cards in your hand that aren't combat cards, so you're gonna be weaker in combat. So it really is a fun strategy if you wanna play like a like a interstellar base owner, but uh, but then if somebody kicks your butt with, with a bunch of weapons, you know, you might be up the creek if you happen to have just sucked the ovoid into your hand. Yep, so that's the that's the planetary base strategy.